What's up guys, Jimmy here, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at IOEX, specifically the IOEX VIP mobile app uh, that they released for Android. Uh, we're gonna be taking a look and seeing if it's actually compatible with the traditional Elastos carrier network. Those of you that have followed me uh, know that this is an issue that I did raise with the IOEX team and they committed on, uh, or they committed to maintaining compatibility. So we're actually gonna see if they did that. And uh, we're also gonna touch on a little something that I've noticed with Elastos, um, the Elastos Carrier Project um, in the past, but also more recently something that's been raised on GitHub. And we're gonna kind of examine the implications and, uh, and all of that. So uh, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, if we download and run the IOEX application on our Android devices, the first thing we're going to see is this login screen. So we're going to enter some test credentials here and see if we're able to actually get into it. Um, and you'll notice that we actually get this error screen. And um, if we try to sign up, we'll also get an error message. Um, and this is actually because this is limited to VIP account holders with IOEX and, and really get that status by being an early token holder as a part of their pre-sale. Um, now, we're interested in validating whether or not IOEX has maintained compatibility with Elastos Carrier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hack this application. Um, I was actually able to do that. Um, I won't disclose how I did it because I've actually disclosed to the IOEX core team uh, this issue and hopefully they'll be able to fix it. However, what I will say is IOEX has a fatal flaw uh, this, this alpha version uses centralized services in order to um, actually validate whether or not you're a VIP account holder and that kind of defeats the purpose of this whole thing being decentralized. Once we actually were able to get around the authentication and bypass everything, again, we go ahead and run this on our Android device and just like last time, we're going to enter in some test account credentials, the same ones as last time. And uh, since we've actually bypassed or tricked the authentication scheme, uh, we're able to log in and get straight to the IOEX application home screen. Um, it's going to ask whether or not it wants, whether or not we're going to allow it to access our pictures and video. Uh, we're going to go ahead and allow those and set this into English um, because it would be nice to be able to read what's going on in the application. But um, the two main functions here are the wallet and cloud storage. The other ones are pretty much um, non-existent. So after we're signed in here, we should, we should be able to get a um, carrier node running and we should be able to kind of tap around here and uh, see if something's going on. So with this fired up, uh, let's go ahead and throw up our Elasto shell and what you can see is our Elasto shell connected to the carrier network, but what we want to do is we want to add this device ID as a friend. And once we do that, we should see if they connect and find each other, and that will verify whether or not IOEX nodes can communicate with carrier nodes. Now, I will tell you, based on an um, investigation of the uh, IOEX uh, source code, the, the mobile application, um, as you see on the screen here, we do use the same bootstraps, okay? IOEX is using the same bootstraps as Elastos. Same keys, same everything. And therefore, they must also be able to communicate, but this will just prove it. So, if we go into our mobile application and select a file, so we're going to try to send our friend here in this little text console, um, we're going to try to send them the file from our mobile device here, um, so let's go ahead and link up the device. It recognizes us from our friend edition. So we go ahead and confirm that, link it up. And we should be able to navigate into our cloud storage space. And uh, our cloud storage space will let us go through and send a file. Okay, so we tap on the cloud storage space, we hit the plus, and we're going to hit upload. We're going to navigate to a picture we have on the phone. And just like that, we see the send file request. So they're actually using friend messages in Elastos carrier terms. 
uh, to, add, to have their nodes communicate. So we see the send file, we see the file name here. In the console is the exact same file that we selected on our phone. So indeed, they are communicating. And keep in mind this Elasto shell that you see on the screen is unmodified. It's actually from November. Uh, the, the code is fairly old, so they're maintaining compatibility quite a ways back. So therefore, TV boxes and these types of devices should be able to communicate appropriately. Okay, moving on, uh, we are actually going to talk about Elastos Carrier, specifically the library that Elastos Carrier is based on, and that is actually called Tox. I mentioned this in a couple of previous videos during my initial due diligence phases on the Elastos project, and Tox is a communications library that allows developers uh, to pull that into their software and actually use decentralized communication you know, protocols in their applications. Um, this is what we would refer to as a reference implementation. So it's provided by the Tox authors as a means to get developers onboarded quickly and to give them something to use. Now, the problem here uh, was actually raised by somebody on the Elastos Carrier issue tracker, um, basically saying, hey, Toxcorn licensing, we see that uh, you're actually using this and it's licensed MIT. Uh, can you clarify how you're basically trying to use this? Um, our stuff is licensed GPL v3. Now, GPL is what's referred to as a copy left license, which basically means if you use this in your software and you're distributing your software, commercially or not, doesn't matter, um, your software needs to abide by the GPL v3 clause, which basically means that you have to open source it, okay? Now here's the rub. Elastos Carrier is licensed MIT. Now, MIT licenses basically state that you do not have to share your source code. Um, a lot of businesses tend to gravitate toward MIT licenses in the libraries they use because it allows them to uh, protect their secret sauce. GPL v3 basically means, hey, you got to give those changes back to the community. Now, the problem with the MIT license here is it kind of, you know, is, is a false positive for the community. So businesses that are using this are probably going to see the MIT license and say, great, I'm good. Well, the problem is 85% of the underlying code in Elastos Carrier is actually GPL v3, which means those businesses have to open source their software if it's utilizing the Tox Core portion, which again is 85 plus percent of the Elastos Carrier Library. So beautiful applications like Hyper um, are technically committing copyright infringement if they do not open source their code. Trust me, I have some unique experience with this. Now, um, the, the, this is you know, sort of a rub here because you have to ask yourself, what will Elastos do to address this concern that businesses will have? Businesses are going to say, hey, look, we're in the device manufacturing business, okay? Oftentimes, our firmware is our greatest asset. We don't wanna just open source all of that and give it to everybody, um, despite the fact that that firmware gives consumers control over their data and all the good stuff that we're promising. So what happens here? Well, in reality, Elastos is going to have to come up with a version of Carrier or their own implementation that speaks the Tox protocol without actually using the Tox source code. It cannot use the Tox source code, at least the GPL versions of it. So yeah, it's going to be very interesting because I think that's going to be a turnoff for a lot of businesses, specifically IOEX. If they've got smart speakers that have firmware that is not open sourced, that is utilizing the Tox protocol, specifically the C Tox core implementation right here, then they will be committing copyright infringement if they don't open source that code. So it's it's a pretty you know it's a pretty chilling thing uh, knowing that that potentially is looming over you, especially someplace like Elastos. As a matter of fact, again, we've got people that are a part of the Tox core project. This guy, for example, is a contributor to the Toxcore project, and now he is asking questions based on, hey, we see you're using this in a certain way. We want to reiterate to you what the terms of our license are, and can we get some clarification on how you're using them? So, for example, the 450 plus thousand online TV boxes, etc., 
Well, if those customers have devices running that code that is GPL v3, then they need to be provided the exact same source code to it. Now, Elastos is not violating the license in that respect. They open source all the Android source code and everything, so they're actually good. The problem is this could create quite a misconception to other businesses like IOEX that want to adopt Elastos technology. So again, I've actually brought this as an objection up to the foundation in public and in private before. Uh, unfortunately, nothing's been done to resolve it yet, but I certainly hope it does get done. I had originally um, began a fork of the um, Tox protocol implementation onto a new project that you know we would re-implement things outside of the C Tox core specification. But unfortunately, um, Elastos wasn't really interested in either funding that development or you know taking it forth because they already had so much invested in their current carrier implementation. So ultimately, this will be something that Elastos has to figure out, and I'll be very interested to see how they figure it out and what that means for businesses that want to adopt Elastos technology. That's about all the time we have here today. If you like what you saw in this episode, please hit that like and subscribe button and feel free to comment below with any questions about this project or future projects you'd like to see on this show. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.